Welcome back, Spartan's Finest. Road to the top 50 with another video. There you saw we are in 78th place. Uh, this was uh, three days ago. Made some, just got busy in the personal life. Haven't been able to make some, so we're doing a mass catch up today. I'm going to spend maybe the next hour uh, making beds instead of sleeping, but want to document our rise into the top 80 now. And we've got our friend Tika Scott, a.k.a. Pace, taking on Titanic here. Smokes the landing. All Zookas plus Brick. And then the traditional 9 o'clock position. Just pull back so we can see everywhere that the shocks need to go. Bringing them in. Now a girl or two peaked, unfortunately. That just kind of happens. And I mean, Titanic, there's a reason Titanic's called Titanic. Now he felt a little bad that he wasn't able to solo that off, but you know, the 236 base probably had, you know, one four plus on it. So that was a very, very decent hit. Where am I? There we go. Next up, Sparty taking on Ballast. Again, a very, very typical base to get. We see Ballast probably three times a week here up on doing choke point. Flaring the girls to the 12 o'clock position. Yeah, only really needs needs two, but like I say, when you have enough GBE, why not why not freeze the single shots, which every every second are gonna take off one Zuka. So yeah, I'm a big advocate. I think we all know it already, but shock everything you can. Um, unless you're trying to save for a second round, which he wasn't. All right, Achilles finishing up the great work that Pace did, that Tika Scott did. He brought a few heavies, so the heavies will peak first. And the core was so weakened already that a couple of salvos from the Zookas and that dropped real fast. Okay, next up is... Uh, Azim on circuit board. Now I remember, I don't remember this exact attack, but I remember in the notes, Azim was complaining that uh, something did not go correctly. Decent so far. Oh, machine guns were, yeah, a slight miss. Instead of hitting the boom cannon to get all nine of those, they were the machine guns took a little bit. So, yeah, and that's one. You know, Nazim's a great player, but oftentimes what we'll do on a board, uh, base like circuit board is, you know, we'll take these four out with barrage and then drop some critters up here just to kind of weaken that shield down because as you see Azim basically killed off the shield like 98 percent of it 99 percent of it uh, but if if the shield were weakened already uh, that's often how we hit that one up Bix the dioxin master 
I think, <laughs> I think I, if I remember this one, this is where this laser Bix had the smallest of gaps. And there the laser fired and took out a bunch of a bunch of his girls. And and that's really the reason he wasn't able to finish this one off. Perfect shocks as always, but just didn't have the quantity of troops to finish this one off. I think he took about four fifths of the core down. But just uh yeah, just, just lost a few many troops when that laser fired. Yeah, that's about three-quarters, four-fifths of the core down. Uh, and that this laser right here, that is not typically there. Um, yeah, and so even one, you know, if one girl peeks and it's a machine gun or a boom cannon, you know, okay, but those lasers, the instant fire... And the trail they'll blaze through, you know, 30 other girls is, is pretty bad. Okay, this is Smokey taking on Axiom. Hmm, hitting the core from down there. A little bit different approach. We usually go up to the 11.30 to 12.30 position. Yeah, I mean, very decent idea. I think that's also part of the reason if you position up here, when the shock runs out, you don't immediately get burned by those flamethrowers or or the laser. Not that not that if, you know, when the shock runs out if you get hit by that, but there would have been that just extra second and you saw he didn't there wasn't a lot left on that core. All right, in comes juice. Again, dioxin, it's just all about hitting those points. Boy, that laser fired again, twice even. But because so much of the core was already down, it uh, it dropped pretty easily. So again, the pathing path the pathing path is right. It's just man, that is one tough cookie. Now here I am on Axiom. I don't actually remember this one. Oh, this might have been a Bart the Core. Because I wouldn't be going this way. Yeah. This was just Bart the Core. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So we had two bases left at this point, And we're thinking finish off circuit board. And then we had the base called Borderline to go. And I do remember this. Yeah, fingers had, and fingers all zoom in so you can see it. You see there is the slightest of gaps, right? Right almost where that is. You see, And you'll see the girls peak. And that's why the machine guns fire. And that's why you lost... You know, whatever amount of girls, you lost just enough girls that, um, yeah, boy, you see, actually lost a whole bunch of girls. Just didn't have enough girls, just didn't have enough DPS to finish it off. But, uh, I know Fingers was, was, uh. I don't want to say complaining, but couldn't say, I think he was on his phone and he just couldn't zoom in enough to see that, you know, millimeter of a gap, even less than that. But it was just enough that uh, these machine guns over here at, at three o'clock did, uh, did open fire. And I, I think he lost about half his girls off of that. Um, 
I must have been sabotaging at the exact same time. See, it says 219, 219, but anyway. So then, out of necessity, because this one had more points, and there were only 94 to be had on borderline, SD does come in and just finishes finishes this this lame duck off. Three shocks and probably just yeah, there might be a second a second salvo, but maybe not. One, two, yeah, okay, there was a second one. So uh, didn't quite get the win on that one though. Still netted over 900 points. And that was a good team result, moving up the leaderboard. All right, guys, we'll be back soon uh, with another one.